Check one, two. All right, we are recording. What's up, you guys? Nico Lumen is here. Going to teach you today about how to rock some macros in Ableton. Oh, we're going to start with an effects macro, and then you can once you understand the concept, you can apply that to different things in Ableton, like uh, effects or uh, MIDI instruments and tons of cool stuff you can do with macros. And also, it applies like Serum has a macro you can assign, so you can you know understand the concept and apply it to a bunch of different things. You'll find it everywhere. So. It's, for an effect macro, we have this thing. Got a little piano loop in Omnisphere. So if you want to build your own macro, which we're going to do, you would click in your audio effects tab, go to audio effects rack and double click it. And then you'll have this thing that says audio effects, drag them in there. That's how you build it. I have a custom one that I already built. So I'm going to show you the daddy macro. I put this on a lot of stuff in my tracks. Um, so I like to just have one then it's done, right? And I put a lot of time into this. So when you get it, you'll be stoked. Um, so start, we got a low pass filter. Right, we got a delay. Got a high pass filter. Got a compressor, just to smush it down. I use that on the drums. I have a drum loop too. Uh, chorus. And it gives it that weird warbly uh, chorus phase sound. I also have a grid beat repeat. That's pretty rad. Um, and I also have the pitch, so that way if I tweak the the beat repeat grid, the pitch will drop. Pretty cool. And a reverb. So you see all that cool stuff I can do with just one macro throw it on my track and it's all of a sudden you can have a lot of fun. It's party time, right? So let's check out the drum loop. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I have this one. It already has one on it, but say I wanted to copy the same exact one. You can just alt, hold down the alt button and drag it over, right? Boom. So now it's, so now you can hear the reverb. So I'm gonna shut the reverb off. Make sure my camera's working on my APC. Yeah, cool. So we got the reverb. So I can do low pass. I can compress it. Just tighten the drums up, throw a reverb. Now I'm gonna go to the track two. Go back to track one. And for those of you who don't know if I'm going too fast here, this is all auto-mapped in Ableton. So my APC40 is auto-mapped to Ableton. So if this track is highlighted, right, right here, boom. So if I go to track two and I highlight that, then that makes this macro active. So whatever is highlighted, like blue, then you can see how this corresponds with this. So that's that's something you want to know if, if, I, if I skipped over that. So... Okay, so now you can see how a macro works, how an effect macro works. You can throw it on there, you can jam it out. You can go here. Okay, no, enough of that. Having fun with music, you know how that goes. Okay, so say I want to build one of these bad boys. I might not reconstruct this entire thing because like I said, it took a lot of time and work, but say I want to start from blank from a macro. I'm going to go audio effects track double click it. Now the first thing I like to drag in is a filter. Let's do the chorus. That's an easy one. Let's do uh, the ping pong delay, right? So those, those are three different effects we can create a macro for, right? So now you can see we're in this audio effects rack. So if I click this little circle thing with a line in it, then you can see we have our eight, one, two, macro, one, two, three, four. We've got those lines. Now we can assign any combination of the effects turning of knobs to one knob here, right? So I think my chorus was macro five, so I like to label it first. So let's label this, rename chorus, right? And you can also right click and pick a color. Boom, makes it way more cool. Now it's similar to the MIDI mapping, but except for it's macro, so you gotta click there, map. Now see this dry wet? I have to right click that and I'm gonna say map to chorus. See one, two, three, but the chorus is labeled. So now if I unmap that, when I turn, actually let me turn the effects, just the piano so you can hear the effects. Oh, whoops. These are all on, I have to turn those off. 
So all I did was the dry wet of the chorus so it's off. And when I turn it up, you can see when I turn this knob, this thing is changing over here. Or alternatively that. Cool, right? So now let's do the same with the ping pong delay. Let's turn it on. I'm gonna hit the macro map. Macro map. Now the dry wet, we're just making this super simple. You can get so complex. Maybe we'll do a couple of, you know, heavy. I'm just trying to keep it uh, tightened up the video and make it not take too long. So delay, actually let's, let's uh, heed my words that I said earlier and let's label delay first. Rename, delay, boom. And let's color it. Let's color it pink for fun. Now when I go to map macro, I'm gonna map that to delay, boom. Now, once again, this is super bare bones in mind. You'll see a lot of the parameters are very customized. I'm just kind of trying to get it going. And if you don't know, um, you know, on these delays, you have a little built-in filter. And I'm gonna back off the feedback. I'm not gonna mess with the feedback on the macro. I'm just gonna leave it like that. So that way, basically, here it's off. You don't hear any delay. Turn it up. Let's try number four. Just change the tempo. Kind of cool, right? So, and then if you go too far, thing is, you know, on the dry wet, if you go basically more than 50%, you're going to be fading all the dry out. It's going to be more wet. It's not going to sound quite as good. So, say if I wanted the dry wet to stop right there. When I go to my, see look, ping pong delay dry wet. I don't have to go to the full 100%. I can go to like 58, let's go 56%. So now you notice when I turn the delay knob all the way here, cause this is the thing, if you're playing live or even make it in the studio, it's nice to go all the way on the knob, but then you know it's gonna stop right here at 50%. So there's a custom parameter. Um, now let's do an auto filter. I'm going to do a high pass delay first. Rename, so high pass, or high pass delay, high pass filter. Um, color it, they're bright green. So now I'm going to map this thing. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do first is change, turn it on so you can see what's going on. Remember if this light is on or off. Um, that's low pass. It's going to sound like this if it's a low pass which that's, you know, that's always dope. And now we're gonna go high pass. Here's someone driving by, I feel that bass. So map, frequency, I'm gonna right click it, high pass, boom. And also, uh, I'm actually not gonna mess with the resonance, qu resonance quite yet, but so now you can see. But if I go here, it's too high, right? It's like gone. So we want it to stop right about there, about 50%. Um, so once we're gonna go map, you can see high pass. Or not, I see in here it doesn't give us percent, it gives us an actual, uh, let's stop right there at where it says 19. Let's make sure that works if I did it right. Nope, I did it wrong. So okay, see right here, 663. 1.09 hertz. So now let's stop it there at 1. Point something hertz. Close enough. Now it stops. You can add the drums. Turn off. So it sounds too thin, right? Quick fix. Just turn the high pass. So, so essentially that's what a macro does. You can put a bunch of stuff in there. So now if we want to take it one step farther, I don't want this video to go too long, but if we want to make that low pass that I was showing you, I, man, we might have to go all the way here. I'm going to click and drag, click it, alt. I'm going to create another one, right? So now we have two. I'm going to unmap this first one, unmap from high pass. Now what I have to do is I have to change this to a low pass filter, right? I'm gonna go here, right click, rename, low pass. Okay, so that's cool. 
we haven't mapped it, so we're gonna do frequency. Oops, you gotta do, oh look, you didn't even have to hit map. I can just right click and go, boom, straight to low pass. Now the problem is, is when I turn, I want it to basically sound like normal, and then when I turn the knob like this, I want the low pass, I don't want the high pass anymore. So what I gotta do here is I have to reverse this. So low pass, so 26, I want it all the way up, and then I want it to stop around, you know, let's try that, 100 hertz. So now it's on, right? And then when I turn to the right, backs off. Let's give it a little bit of resonance. So, okay, now here's another thing that's really cool that I, I do a lot of time. When I have it on, you can see it's all the way, but the filter is still on. So I want to map the on off button to low pass. So now when I see it's off and then when I turn it, it turns on. You can see how the lights are dead and then boom, it turns on. So it doesn't do it till halfway. So what I want is 64. Do I want that to 17? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I want this to like four. So basically I'm only going four, oops, four MIDI notches before it turns. Now, now one more thing we're gonna go tweak, uh, tweak the resonance. I don't want just a static resonance, I want the, sen the resonance to flow with it. So I'm gonna go resonance to low pass. Now it goes way too high, right? So I want it when it's all the way up. Resonance, I want to bring this down to about you know, 59. And then when I bring it out, I want it off. See how, how the resonance builds a little bit? I actually want it to go a little bit less. Now let's hear what that sounds like. It almost goes too low. So we're gonna back this off, push the resonance up, and on the low pass, I want it to stop at like 177 hertz. Oops, I keep going to MIDI. Uh, make sure we're good on that. Okay. See, now that gives it that sound. And then if I go all the way, you see it shuts off. And then if I want to close that, boom, that thing. If I want to close all the way, so if you click just that one light, you get the knobs. Click the middle, it's going to give you your chain. Now you can double click that and all of your effects are going to pop up. And if all your effects are too techy, you can double click the top and kind of break them down like that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to do a beat repeat, same thing. Let's just drag a beat repeat in there. I'm gonna drag a beat repeat at the at before before the delay, because where every effect you put in, it's it's gonna make a difference. So same thing. If I want to right click, say beat repeat, rename, beat repeat, boom. I'm gonna do the grid to beat repeat. So now let's go back here. It's this one, right? Now, oh, on beat repeat, I like to have insert so it, it repeats the whole thing. But now, I'll, once again, it goes too much. So we want to kind of shut that down. 256. Let's take it to like quarter bar, half bar. And then here, we don't want it to go more than like, say, if you want to really fine tune the glitches, 164. Oops. Now let's hear. And also here you can hit no triplets if you want. So yeah, there it is. Um, and as you know, you know I added a compressor for the drums. Maybe you notice. Did you notice how, the, okay, I turned up the compressor. The drums are hitting and if I turn up the compressor, they kind of compress a little bit. They get a little more under control. So, but that'll just be in the Daddy Macro. I'll make that for free download. I'll just throw this little template 
in there and you can just click the link. I'll figure it out. All right, you guys. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Nico Luminous. Check you on the next one. Peace.